are you afraid of? This is our place. No more running. We stop them here! You know, I came up with this crazy thing that I should take all the elements of what this guy might be into and sort of like um, spend my time while I'm contemplating the role listening to all of these things. So I had Wagner, crowd noises from soccer games and simply white noise, you know. So while I was doing my prep, learning my lines, I had all of this stuff playing simultaneously. So I had three different stereo system was running at the same time. I, it's, I look back on it now and go, what the hell was I trying to achieve with that? But it kind of put me in this place where there was always an edge to the way I was learning the dialogue because I had to fight through all that noise, the concentration, but it actually kind of gave a sort of a strange edge on the characterization because I was pushing through that white noise. So that could be, you know, a metaphor for his, his psychology or the damages that he has intellectually. You're the first man in five years who didn't tell me I look like Veronica Lake inside of a minute. You look better than Veronica Lake. There was a moment, sort of like it's a, a loving moment, and we're sort of kissing or whatever, and it says in the script that I'm supposed to run my hand down her leg, and, you know, it's, it's Kim Basinger, you know? <laughs> so you're sort of, you know, you're being just being very respectful or whatever, and, and at one point she just grabs my hand and goes, like this, Russell. <laughs> it's like, okie dokie. <laughs> so that was a good moment. That's the power you have, Jeffrey. Vital insider information the American public need to know. Lowell Bergman, the hotshot who never met a source he couldn't turn around. I had a great relationship with Al, even though we see cinematic performance from completely different sides, you know. He was very generous with me and uh, I'm funny, you know. We just didn't enjoy being on the set together. But I did ask him at one point in time why he gave so many options, you know, because Michael set it up. So every time there was a camera on Al, there was a camera on me. And I was just interested because some of his choices was so left field, you know. And he said to me that uh, early on in his career, he'd worked out that, you know, in theater, when he plays a character, he's totally in charge. You know, that theater is the actor's medium. But the film was the director's medium. And he'd learned from what he thought he was doing in a film, and then he saw the finished product and realized it was vastly different. So he'd made this decision to simply put before the director a smorgasbord of choices for every single take. And whereas I could kind of understand what he was saying, I disagreed with it. Because to me, it meant that he was kind of fundamentally giving up his own perspective, you know, and giving it all to the director and letting the director make the decisions. And, uh, I, I think you're just in a much stronger position if you know what you're aiming at. Are you not entertained? We went into that film without a completed script. You know, there was a script that it was existed, but the first meeting that I had with Ridley, he said, don't worry about the script because I'm going to change it. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm the actor, and at some point in time, I've got to know what we're doing. You know, so then we're in a situation where, from that point on, we were kind of hand to mouth deciding things the day before we shot them and stuff like that. So it was a real by the seat of the pants thing. And for the movie to come out and be as successful as it was, get the critical response it got, win the awards that it won, including best film, it was quite an incredible ride. And it still goes on today. So what's your story? You the poor kid that never got to go to Exeter or Andover. Despite my privileged upbringing, I'm actually quite well balanced. I have a chip on both shoulders people sort of might have edges and boundaries. And when you've got a mind as broad and expansive as John Nash's, he doesn't have those boundaries, you know? We were shooting in Princeton, and that's where John lives, and that's where he works. So he just walked up to the set, and I realized it was him, and I, I was sort of dumbfounded, you know? Because there he is, the guy that I'm playing, and I'm staring at him. And I learned a very strong lesson through, through that. You know, if you're playing somebody and you have the opportunity to meet them, don't be an absolute idiot. Meet them, you know, um, because they will inform you of stuff that you can't imagine, you know, or they will actually show you that your imagination may have gone too far or hasn't gone far enough, you know.